Hey, good evening, everybody. So I'm just um, posting another uh, timeline of um, John Wilde's life. This is an updated version. And I thought I would just kind of go through everything as briefly as I can with you because it's hard to read. So circa 1618, he's born in England. 1635, he immigrates to the colonies on the ship Elizabeth with the Whitred family. Also on board is brother William, who is 30 years old, and Alice Wilde, who is 40 years old. Uh, we don't know the relationship exactly between Alice and William and Alice and John. It's not sure. 1636, John is in Ipswich, living with or near, near William. And actually, the, their home was on High Street, close to the junction of East Street. 1637, he was a soldier in the Pequot War. 1639, he was paid three shillings for his service in the Pequot War. 1642, John was part of an expedition to disarm the sachem of the Merrimack Passaconaway, and he was one of 20 soldiers to do so. 1643, he marries Priscilla Gould and settles at New Meadows, which is later known as Topsfield. The house is, of course, at the junction of Perkins Row and Meeting House Lane. It's no longer there, but that's where he lived. 1644 was the birth of his son, John Wilds Jr. 1645, his brother William was living in Raleigh, Massachusetts. 1646, John was paid 30 shillings as a result of a lawsuit brought against Michael Cartrick by William Whitred. 1648, birth of daughters Sarah and Elizabeth were be actually between 1648 and 1656. And the birth of his son Jonathan happened sometime after 1650. 1652, William Payne sues John on the 20th of September. 1653 is the birth of his daughter Phoebe. 1654, he is known as a carpenter at Topsfield, and he grants 20 acres uh, to Robert Andrews. 1656, two of Thomas Elatrop's children paid their portion of their inheritance to John that June. 1658 is the birth of his daughter Priscilla on the 6th of April. 1659, John paid the ninth largest tax rate, um, and he ran the boundary line between Topsfield and Salem with Abraham Reddington, John Reddington, Joseph Hutchinson, and William Evans uh, for the Topsfield side, and Thomas Putnam and Nathaniel Putnam for the Salem side. In uh, 1660 is the birth of his daughter Martha, the 13th of May. He also deposed for Jacob Town regarding a mare. Simon Bradstreet files a lawsuit against John for non-payment of rent and detaining a cow. John pays Simon 50 shillings. This is interesting because it's always been thought that John uh, was either gifted his, his land where he lived by his father-in-law, Zacchaeus Gould, or that he had uh, been granted it by the town. Um, but this kind of shows that maybe he rented, at the beginning at least, from Simon Bradstreet. Very interesting. In 1661, he was the constable of Topsfield and shared in common land south of the river, as did his father-in-law, Zacchaeus Gould. And as constable, he served a writ to Edmund Town for allegedly detaining a portion of a meadow which abutted another meadow owned by a Mr. Pembleton. In 1662 was the birth of his son Nathan on the 14th of December. And again, for 1662, he is constable of Topsfield. In March of 1662, Judd deposed he got lost in the swamp after dark and saw Evan Morris and Thomas Baker with John Howe attempting to rescue an ox. 1663 was kind of a bittersweet year for him. Um, <clears throat> he experienced the death of his three-month-old son, Nathan, on the 17th of March. 
Also, a month later, his first wife, Priscilla, dies on the 16th of April. But then, uh, later that year, the 23rd of November, he marries my great-grandmother, Sarah Averill. And also that year, he conveys 32 acres at Bushy Hill and 8 acres of meadow to William A.C. of Raleigh, Massachusetts. 1664, John paid the 17th largest tax of about 31 taxpayers. The, um, the number one taxpayer that year was Zacchaeus Gould. And then John, William Averill, Thomas Baker, and Edmund Town were appointed to divide the timber in the 500 acres of common land into three equal portions. They awarded some of the share according to their own personal tax rates. John also laid out a parcel of land with Francis Peabody and Thomas Perkins, acquired by John Howe. 1665 is the birth of his son Ephraim. And also he appraised a stray horse turned in by John Reddington. He was appointed to establish boundaries of a parcel of land. Edmund Bridges wanted to buy from Topsfield with Thomas Perkins at Francis Peabody. Edmund allowed the town 35 shillings. In 1668, John paid the seventh largest tax rate he acquired 20 acres of common land in the first division and 20 acres of common land in the second division. He sold the 20 acres from the first division to Thomas Dorman in 1674. On the 13th of November of this year, Francis Peabody, John Gould, Thomas Baker, and Edmund Town were chosen to lay out and divide common land belonging to Topsfield by Salem according to the order in 1661 and the rule appointed in 1664. This was a lot of work. <laughs> in 1669, John was owed money by the town, most likely for carpentry work. In March of 1669, John drew lot number 30 from the southerly division of the common lands. In 1672, or thereabouts for this first part, the Reverend John Hale and Mr. Corbett and others traveled to Ipswich to advise and pray for John's son, Jonathan. Some people believed that Jonathan was possessed. Others believed he faked his odd behavior. But Reverend Hale concluded that he was under the obsession of the devil. Then, uh, after Reverend Hale met with Mary Reddington in 1677, he concluded Jonathan to suffer bewitchment. John sold 30 acres of land to John French also in that year. In 1675, the 7th of March, Sergeant Reddington, Francis Peabody, and John Wilds were chosen to exchange a strip of land with Thomas Baker next to his farm. Then settled the Baker Farm boundary lines. In 1676, sadly, uh, his son Jonathan dies before the 30th of April, and John Sr. was appointed to administrate uh, Jonathan's estate. Now, Jonathan died into state, meaning that he did not have a will. So, his father swears oath to Jonathan's inventory, which was taken by John Howe, Howe and William Averill. In the same year, John Jr. makes will the 22nd of October, 1676. And um, it's tradition that John Jr. makes his will because he was preparing to go fight in King Philip's War, which is where it's believed that Jonathan uh, died. Um, Mary Reddington in 1676 or thereabouts accuses Sarah of bewitching her to her brother John Gould. So circa 1676-77, Mary visits the Reverend Hale, excuse me, in Beverly, seeking guidance and prayers regarding Sarah Wiles. In 1677, um, I penciled this in because it's probably at this time that John Wilds threatens to file a lawsuit against John Reddington regarding his wife Mary's gossip 
towards Sarah. I don't know that for sure. That's speculation on my part. Then, sadly, John Wiles Jr. dies before the 27th of September 1677 when an inventory of his estate is taken. John, excuse me, John Sr. is chosen to view fences with Daniel Boardman. And then also that year, John swears an oath of allegiance and fidelity with about 79 others before unsigned John Gould, <clears throat> uh, John Wilde's former brother-in-law. 1678 is the marriage of John's daughter Elizabeth to Benjamin Jones, the 22nd of January. And it would possibly happen at Gloucester. In 1679 is circa 1679 is the death of Mary Reddington again, who blames Sarah for her ill health to the end of her life. Then daughter Phoebe marries Timothy Day. Also that year, um, John is a trial juryman at Ipswich Court in the June session. The 22nd of March, 1679, 80, he is chosen with Thomas Baker, Corporal Town, uh, to run the bounds the south side of the common in lots which abut that particular um, boundary line. They also ran bounds between Daniel Boardman, William Averill, and Francis Peabody's farms that year. In 1680, again, John was a trial juryman in, uh, for the January session, and John was chosen with John Gould, John Reddington, Deacon uh, Perkins, Francis Peabody, Thomas Baker, John Peabody, John Town, Isaac Estee, and John Hovey, and finally, Nehemiah Abbott, to negotiate with Parson Danforth to continue his ministry at Topsfield. In 1681, his daughter Priscilla marries Henry Lakes, the 9th of May. John paid the 18th largest tax rate as a minister's rate. On the 29th of July, Thomas Perkins and Joseph Bixby travel to Cambridge to fetch Parson Joseph Capon, who was about 22 years old at the time, to bring Parson Capon to Francis Peabody's house. Waiting at Francis Peabody's house were Deacon Perkins, Sergeant Reddington, James Howe, John Gould, Samuel Bustle Sr., uh, John Howe, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, John Howe, John Wiles, and Francis Peabody to negotiate for Parson Capon to be their minister. Um, let's see, in 1682, John was a tithing man for the Howlett's, Perkins, and Clark's families, and also the, the families that lived in between those three families. <clears throat> he was chosen with Francis Peabody, Sergeant Reddington, Jacob Town, and John Gould to lay out 12 acres of land for Parson, Capis, for Parson Capon <clears throat> at the time of Parson Capon's choice. Excuse me, if Parson Capon didn't like the land or the location, they would lay it out elsewhere. And their boundaries were very explicit in the documents. So, John William Averill Isaac Esty, along with the selectmen, seated the people of the meeting house this year as well. In 1685, John sells four acres of land to William Perkins. That's all he did that year. In 1686, this is the big one, a big year. John testifies against his former brother-in-law, John Gould, at the treason trial of John Gould. <clears throat> in 1688, sadly, his daughter Priscilla Lake dies, the 23rd of March. And it's also possible this year that son Ephraim possibly becomes engaged to one of the Simon's daughters. In 1689, however, that didn't happen because in 1689 um, Ephraim marries Mary Howlett on the 18th of March and John is chosen with John Howe to collect back taxes owed for the minister's rate they were given power to prosecute delin delinquents who were refusing to pay in 1690 uh, John conveys all his property to his son Ephraim <clears throat> in 1691 Ephraim is chosen as constable for 1692. 
<coughs> also in 1691, John and Sergeant Howlett are chosen to oversee the request for Corporal French to exchange a small parcel of land for the straightening of his fence. Corporal French will provide a quality fence of a specified length. Of course, in 1692, very sad, sad year. 21st of April, uh, John's wife, Sarah, is arrested and taken from their home on Perkins Row. His daughter, Sarah, and son-in-law, Edward Bishop, <clears throat> are arrested at their home in Salem. The 22nd of April, Sarah is examined either at the Meeting House or at Nathaniel Ingersoll's Tavern at Salem Village. If somebody knows the answer to that question, that would be phenomenal. The 30th of June, Sarah is indicted. The 2nd of July, Sarah is tried. And the 12th of July, William Stoughton signs her death warrant. Sarah uh, has been transferred between most of the jails. So she uh, started out in the Salem jail. She was transferred to Boston sometime in May. Then after that, she was transferred to Ipswich, and then she made a return to the Salem jail. <clears throat> and again, uh, John and Ephraim traveled at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, to see her, see how she was doing, and tended to her needs. And it was at a great cost to them, both emotionally as well as a uh, great cost to their farm, too. Um, his daughter, Phoebe, is also arrested this year, although I cannot determine the date of her arrest. If somebody knows that, that would be wonderful. Sarah's hanged on the 19th of July, 1692. And I can't help but wonder if John and Ephraim were present at her hanging, since even though John was fairly advanced in years, and he was still traveling to all the jails to see to her needs with Ephraim. I have strong feelings that they were probably present at her hanging. <clears throat> and Phoebe, uh, his daughter Phoebe, is part of a group who petitioned the court for their release in October of 1692. So I'm assuming that Phoebe was released. I don't know that she escaped. If somebody knows what happened there, please let me know. John's other daughter, Sarah and Edward Bishop, escape the Boston jail and they go into hiding. And as we all know, they eventually end up in Rehoboth, Massachusetts. 1693, John marries Mary Jacobs, the 25th or 26th of June. And that information is, is when I got directly from Parson Capon's book, when I went to see that book um, at the Phillips Library Reading Room in um, Raleigh, Massachusetts. In 1697, John is finally admitted into full communion to the Church of Topsfield. And again, I got that directly from Parson Capon's book. In 1705, old Father Wiles, as he was affectionately known, passes away the 14th of May, and he was about 87 years old. So this man left a lead, a very long, long life, um, filled with sorrow as well as some joyous experiences as well. And he just he kept on going no matter what happened in his personal life he always kept going he remained active and he just he got things done and for that i really i i'm left speechless so um and that's i guess uh, that's all i can really say very emotional at the end <laughs> so thank you very much for listening